Welcome to Start Views on ADR Ever, the podcast about simplifying the traditional African method of settling disputes or the appropriate dispute resolution ADR in a bid to attract more users to settle their disputes or conflicts with mediation, arbitration, collaborative law, restorative justice, ombuds, negotiation, conciliation, and early neutral evaluation. My name is Chinwe Ebonike, postdoctoral fellow at the University of Brighton, United Kingdom, and the fellow of the American Bar Association section of this resolution. I am thrilled to welcome Matt Patterson to the other show. He is a California State University Channel Islands Ombudsman. He helps the university employees in all categories resolve conflict and navigate administration and policies. Before becoming an Ombudsman, uh, Mark served as an attorney in the Air Force for 24 years, retiring at the rank of the colonel. He's a licensed um, attorney in the state of New York, a certified mediator, and has completed the International Ombudsman Association's Foundation of Organizational Ombudsman Practice Course. He wears many hats, so I've left the links to his profile below. Welcome to the show, uh, Mark. Thanks, Chinwe. It's great to be here. Great to be able to talk to you about freshmen I love a lot. Oh, thank you so very much for my invitation. So without further ado, um, the first question is, what is Ombuds or Ombuds um, Man? It's a profession that's actually a couple hundred years old. It began in Sweden, and the broad idea was to have sort of an independent liaison or resource for people who had trouble with the king's government and the concept caught on throughout Europe and then even throughout the world of having an independent resource, sort of like a watchdog, um, yeah. a way to keep help organizations perform their best, help uh, accountability. And in more recent years, there have been different flavors of ombuds work that have have developed. There still are, are ombuds in many uh, institutions throughout the world that that perform essentially the same role I was talking about, but there have been other kinds like long-term care ombuds, even advocate ombuds, uh, and the type of ombuds that I am, which is an organizational ombud. Yeah. Okay, so um, thank you so very much. So what's the difference between the organizational ombuds and the um, traditional one? The organizational ombuds is a, is a model that I believe really got started in higher education about 50 years ago. Uh, it's not unique to higher education now, but the organizational ombuds is essentially an independent resource within an organization that strives to be both independent, but also informal, impartial, like off, uh, off the record, and mm -hmm. confidential. And we help at all levels of an organization, uh, individuals within the organization to to manage conflict, to deal with conflict. Yeah. Okay, so what's um, the difference? Okay, so before then, what what is the role um, of an ombuds um, man? Um, and um, since the you are hired, you were hired by university. So how independent? Is your um, are you uh, the role of um, an ombudsman? Yeah, that's a challenging question, Chinwe. And I guess I would say, looking a little bit back to your last question, um, that the goal is to be as independent as possible, depending on how the appointment is achieved. In the same way, uh, the goal is to be informal to the greatest extent possible. And I don't think I really answered that well in the last question. I think informality or being uh, off the record and having a no author authority to act on behalf of an organization or to take formal action is a key difference of organizational ombuds practice versus more traditional ombuds roles, which have investigation powers uh, and will sometimes play a role in um, recommending and advocating a particular program uh, changes. <clears throat> and so an organizational ombuds uh, is independent to the extent that the organization 
is willing to create that office. In my role, I, I report to the chief of staff of the president of the university so that I could have sort of a broad perspective on issues across the campus. I don't represent the president and my charter, the, the document which establishes my office says that. So th that is a, 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 an aspiration, not always perfect. Um, the standards of practice that the or International Ombuds Association uh, encourages organizations and ombuds to use, uh, say that you should report to the highest authority possible within the organization. And to the extent that that's possible, you know, ombuds is more independent. Okay. Um, so what is the um, difference between a mediator or an arbitrator um, when compared to an ombudsman? I like to think that mediation and even arbitration are tools or means of managing disputes. And somebody who does that full time would be a mediator or an arbitrator. But uh, at least as far as mediation goes, that is a tool that an ombuds can use, depending mm -hmm. on the level of experience and training of the ombuds. And if not mediation, something similar to what we often just call like a fac facilitating a discussion or a difficult conversation. So the role of an ombuds differs from somebody who does mediation full time in that we may be involved in the earliest stages of conflict before there's even a discrete dispute. It may be helping an individual navigate a, a policy or find resources or take steps in order to prevent conflict or just manage a, a working or educational relationship better. So we can be involved in earlier stages, or sometimes we might be involved after a formal process, like a grievance has been completed and helping the parties continue to work together as they may often be the case. After the formal process ends, even after a mediation or an arbitration ends, in many cases, employees or people in an organization still have to work together. And it may not be, but just because the, <laughs> the case is over that everybody gets along and works well together. It takes sometimes assistance and a, and a, and a resource that can be uh, independent and trusted to help navigate that. So that's mm -hmm. why I guess I think of it as ombudsman is more like full spectrum uh, support for dealing with conflict. May use tools like mediation, facilitation, coaching. Um, yeah. And we also have a role uh, that differs in that. I think you, you may get into this later. We strive to provide what's sometimes called upward feedback or identifying patterns and trends. So within my organization, to the extent I see a number of visitors or speak with people uh, over time, I may see things that are important for those in leadership roles to be aware of that may not come through other channels. And, and I to circle back to arbitrator, that one's a, a big difference because an arbitrator has decision-making authority. Mm -hmm. And an ombuds, at least an organizational ombuds, will never have authority to make a decision or to be in sort of a judge-like role that would go against the principle of being an informal resource. Okay, thank you so very much. So in a nutshell, what are the um, pros and cons associated with ombuds? Um, we'll, we'll start with the, the cons. I was... Um, Put things in perspective and mm -hmm. sometimes the cons are also strengths but one one challenge i mentioned that i'm an organizational ombuds may differ from other dispute resolution roles and being sort of full spectrum a con or a challenge of that is it's sometimes hard to assess how effective we are particularly to the extent that our work is confidential i can't like if you and i were talking about a, a problem you were having within your institution i couldn't be able to say i helped Shouldn't we not sue the university? That would be violating <laughs> confidentiality. So we, we we tend to have some challenges in, in being able to really uh, clearly establish uh, the value in a concrete way. I mm -hmm. personally believe, in, and many people who provide feedback mm -hmm. uh, know that they felt like they had nowhere else to go. They may leave or, or would file some sort of uh, formal action without having a resource like an ombuds to work things uh, beforehand. So that a con is, is establishing um, value and showing value to mm -hmm. things that can be somewhat hard to, to pin down. Um, another con is it, it requires a certain level of trust 
from those who uh, leaders who who create an ombuds office and appoint it yeah. because to do it well we need to be confidential okay. for, like for you to come to me you really have to trust that i'm not going to reveal things about say your supervisor uh, that could come back to you yeah. you want to have that um, yeah. and from a compliance standpoint sometimes organizational leaders particularly those in uh, legal roles can see that as a little bit scary hmm. like there may be something that comes to the ombuds attention that's going to come back and bite us uh, later because we didn't know about it my answer to that is that we're not in the business of trying to hide information we, we maintain confidentiality but we try to find ways for information hmm. to come out that might not otherwise come out uh, but so those those are two challenges two cons to an extent proving value and, and maintaining confidentiality so that people have trust um, and including organizational leaders. The pros of it are we're able to help people navigate problems sort of within their own power and their own autonomy. I personally find that to be very rewarding when somebody comes to me or if I'm in a position of conflict, if somebody is able to allow me the, to have the power and authority to make a decision about what and when I'm going to do to deal with the issues, that feels enormously powerful to me. Many times in organizations, people feel as good as a formal process is that once they raise an issue, it's out of their hands. It becomes part of the process. And, and unfortunately, sometimes people can feel less than appreciated or taken care of, or even fearing retaliation mm -hmm. uh, by raising formal issues. And the ombuds can help support people in doing that without triggering uh, a need to take action that someone might, might not be ready yet to do. And we're also, I think, an, another pro is because we offer full spectrum support, we can adapt the methods we're using. Like recently, I've I facilitate difficult conversations or even mediate yeah. um, in some cases. I had a, somebody in an organizational role who wanted to facilitate a discussion between two other people in the in the unit and asked me if I could kind of sit along as a like a co-facilitator without actually leading it. And there's no model that says mm -hmm. that you know mediation, you do it this way. Yeah. And, and I was adapting to support this person's desire to have a facilitate discussion uh, with my support versus me managing it. So I like the I like the flexibility that we are able to bring to yeah. different kinds of disputes. Well, thank you so very much. We are running out of time. So we um, the final question is um what qualifications are training and required um to become an ombud? And I can answer this quickly. <laughs> there are no requirements oh. um, because what an ombuds does varies a lot depending on the nature of the appointment and the charter, if there is one that creates the ombuds role. Yeah. In the broadest sense, an ombuds should be somebody who is comfortable with uh, communication, helping people uh, address problems, may often come from a, a law or counseling background, often with experience in mediation. But it's it's not a requirement because at this time there's no like the law or medicine uh, body that governs how people practice. Yeah. We're, you know, we're, I think we're becoming more professional, but we're not quite there yet. It's okay. look, more of Thank looking you. at skills. Thank you so very much, Mark. Um, running, we've run out of time. Thank you so very much you. for coming on the show, <laughs> sharing your perspective and insights. I, I believe potential users would take on board all you've listed, hearing benefits associated with onboards and opt for it whenever the need arises. <laughs> Thank you so Thank very you. much. Thank you. Sorry. Bye, Chase. <laughs> Bye-bye.